time I go to sleep, it's like I scroll down memory lane And see the dirt I done before I acquired the fame If you can see what I see, you see me popping a chain Or you see me scrapping, I pull out and pop off that thing I'm usually hustling, bubbling, slinging that game No matter the weather, it's sun, snow, sleet, or it's rain See, fiends got a habit, it hurts so they feet in their vein And I got a habit of having grams of it, man I'm chasing the paper, it's simple, I'm about my bread I cop it and pop it to white tea and turn red See, niggas that know me, who owe me, they see me, they run They know if I catch them, I cut them or feed them my gun It's real in the field, nigga, front, get your cat bill With that needle, that jet, that ooh-wop, or that Mac meal Unload and reload, I live by the streets cold And pray the Lord, have mercy on my soul I So, I'm going to start over here and go and do this. Media. The Bureau of Labor Statistics is the principal fact-finding agency for the federal government in the broad field of labor economics and statistics. Our reports and other products cover a broad range of topics including the U.S. labor market, economy, and society. Our recent publications are listed below. Intriguing data. So, over the year, percentage changes, and I'm not even going to get into that stuff because numbers is not my area. But all of this stuff will bring you to the recent articles about all the number stuff, unemployment rate, stuff like that, productivity. And uh, there's also tables on here. Uh, I'm not quite sure. They're under tools, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they got maps and yes news release tables um, let's just go there now so they got for whatever you want uh, unemployment employment paying benefits productivity uh, what they look at as far as what unemployment's going to look like and here's where you get stuff for these tables. And uh, here's the tables over here. Employment situation news release. Okay. And you can make you can even make your own maps. And now these are the headquarters of the news agencies. Mainstream media. These are their headquarters. This is, this is Google right here. This is Fox News. This is CNN. Rest. Not too sure on the rest. It's been a while since I've been here. Um, okay, so. It's the numbers and tables thing. Now, I told you what they cover and everything like that. Now, the government has something called talking points. These are what they give to mainstream media and general public for what they want them to know. If you don't know what a talking point is, uh, I'll show you in a minute. But... All these people okay those are talking points and that's what the government tells them to say okay 
in the government, there is no Republican and there is no Democrat. They're one party. Okay. Now, talking points, as far as politically, anyways, usually come from think tanks. Now, the think tanks are the guys like the Rand Corporation and Project for the New American Century. Um, they employ people like Henry Kissinger, the, uh, the New World Order people, Illuminati, globalist, elite. And uh, so whatever topic um, they tend to be, be talking about, they aim that towards the media. This is how they control the media through talking points. For instance, um, I just want to point this out. No, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Okay, talking points. Okay, when used politically, the typical purpose of a talking point is to propagandize, specifically using the technique of argument ad nauseum, i.e. continuous repet repetition, repetition within media outlets until accepted as fact. Okay? The framing of political discourse in terms of simple talking points has been criticized by media personalities such as comedian John Stewart for being a superficial examination of issues. And that's why they have shows like the John Stewart show. John Stewart, whose brother owns, um, he's, a, he's a major guy on Wall Street. Major, major guy on Wall Street. Um, you can look, hey, we're interested? Let's look him up right now. John Stewart's brother. That's all you got to put. Federal Reserve. Okay, works at the Stock Exchange. Larry Leibowitz. John Stewart's brother. Okay. I like John Stewart. It's pretty good. So, those are talking points. Now, Project for a New American Century, first off, look, neoconservative think tank based in Washington, focused on U U.S. foreign policy. Now, it says founders, Robert Kagan and Dick Cheney. Wrong. Bill Crystal, uh, if you guys don't know him, he's he's one of the uh, global elites. Now, uh, twenty of the twenty-five people who signed the PNAC's founding statement of principles, ten went on to serve in administration of U.S. President George W. Bush. Okay, and there they all are. They're the ones who started this whole thing. Foreign Policy Initiative. And it goes through all of it over here. If you look at the freaking staff and everybody, you will come to... Let's put it in. Boom. Takes you right to Project for New American Century. Yeah, I got something on my computer. Uh, every time you go over the word American, it does this. Yeah, 
They each do different things. <laughs> Ain't that cool? America. So yes, Jeb Bush says it right here. Okay, you want political facts? Go to political. They're an actual by non-biased organization. Now look, back to his brother's wars. Now he's listening to his advisors. Folks, the advisors that they have in the House, uh, for instance, pretty much the same cabinet has been in Washington since the 70s. Uh, look at the people who worked under George Bush, George W. Bush. Okay, now look. In the late 90s, a group of conservative conservatives issued a manifesto calling for a stronger reaganate American foreign policy. And it talks about the 25 guys again. Blah, 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 blah. Scooter Libby and all them guys. One signer stood out for his near total lack of foreign policy experience. Jeb Bush. But when the same group sent a, a letter the following year to President Clinton calling for the ouster of Iraqi dictators, Saddam Hussein Bush's name was absent. And the group's founders pressed for war with Iraq after September 11th. On and on. De Jeb Bush is in charge of the project for the new American century, which is a neoconservative think tank. And... There's a neo, what a neocon is. A person with neoconservative views. Yeah, good definition. It's unreal. Criminally insane spenders that believe in killing brown people for the brown order. Huge Orwellian government. Unfathomable amounts of spending bomb tens of thousands of people to death to rearrange the globe, take the worst aspects of the liberal and conservative positions and combine them into one, and you have a neocon. That's what a neocon is. Okay? And besides, um, also, I'd just like to add, I should say anyways, once one member of your family has run for office, another member of your family cannot run. Number one. Number two, you can't serve, you can't have people serving on your cabinet that were in somebody else's cabinet. They can't be together. We've got, we've got rules here, okay? And the government's just having a free go at it. Doing whatever the hell they want. They come across a freaking stump in the road. They freaking erase it or change it or do something. Just, you know, change change the law. Whatever. So that's what a neocon is. For everybody out there who's going to vote. Which voting is useless. So, if you would like to know more about that, we got propaganda from the pulpit. Government talking points. Wherever the people of America, some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem. The clergy is going to help the government? Have you ever heard of clergy response teams? Yes, by clergy, I do mean church. The federal government is going through the country and getting involved in churches. They want to see their sermons. They want to know what's, what they're putting in their sermons. 
They're taking words out of the Bible. They're sw they're changing scriptures around and adding other scriptures with them and other hymns to make it appear as though it's something else, to make it appear as though God says it's okay. Okay, so they move things around to make it sound how they want it to sound. And so, clergy response team, um, okay, this one, there then. So, clergy response team and Folks, I'd like you to take a look at this. Let's do this again. The BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, is the principal fact-finding agency for the federal government. In the broad field of labor economics and statistics, okay, they cover topics like the economy and society. I want you folks to think about who covers what's going on in society? Okay, not many people. Uh, just take a look at their chart over here. They got their own newsroom, news releases, publications, media contacts. There's their tables, and they even have their own glossary because. Nobody else knows words like this. This is the jargon, as it's called. Have you ever noticed? You ask somebody in government a question, they will not. They simply will not. Give a straight answer. Yes. Or no. Never ever. You won't you won't hear it. You just won't. You won't. Ever. You do that for a reason. So it's very interesting, folks. Very interesting. I suggest you come over here and take a look. Check out maybe uh, I don't know, civilian workers. You want to check that out, National Compensation Survey? And speaking of surveys, ask yourself this question. With all of the polls that get done, all the polls that you see on TV, the surveys, census, if you will, I mean, have you ever been questioned on a poll? You know anyone who has? When they ask a certain percentage of people, who are they asking? What kind of people? But they don't tell you all this information. Because they don't do shit. They don't do shit. Folks, let's get another thing clear here. The government doesn't do anything by accident. anything they're 10 steps ahead they know what they're gonna do a long time ago well, back to the BLS it provides you with direct access to experts on a broad range of statistical topics so you can communicate with the professionals who know the most about the subjects that interest you and your audience your audience, who are they talking to? Our reports and other products cover a broad range of topics, which we just went over. All BLS offices have staff available to provide audio and video interviews. That staff would be the news reporters, mainstream media. They give them their talking points. Here's the headquarters. San Francisco has Google. CNN, Fox headquarters, which is actually in Texas. Okay. And of course, you're not going to, you know, have a big thing there saying Fox News. Take a look, folks. 
Look at all the subjects. They do employment, unemployment, productivity. They've got regional offices. They've got international offices. Talk about inflation, inflation and prices. Check out their data tools. Look at their publications. Look at their economic releases. Their quarterlies. Uh, employment projections. Okay, these are, and then they get this information from the think tanks. Rand Corporation, Project for a New American Century, run by Jeb Bush. Uh, which, by the way, let me point out, if you are president, if you are in any office in government, you cannot hold office of another place, another corporation, or another anything. You'd be lucky if you could be head, head of the household. Okay? Let's get that clear. While well, you have a job in government, that's your job, and you have no other job. And when that job is over, that's it. You're done. Your term's over. Go back to doing what you were doing. Okay? Term limits. There's the student's one. Now, folks, if you still don't believe, especially after all the times I told you that, you know, Anderson Cooper and uh, Wolf Blitzer, Kieran Chetri, uh, ju that's just for CNN, Megan Fox, uh, Sean Hannity, a couple of people that worked for Glenn Beck. Um, a bunch of fucking reporters, folks, have admitted on air, whoops, slip of the fucking mouth, you know, that they worked for the CIA. And Anderson Cooper will openly tell you that he used to be a CIA agent. Used to my balls. The people that work at CNN and Fox News are a major proportion of the CIA and FBI. Uh, Megyn Kelly, Fox News, I'm pretty damn sure that uh, she's an agent in the uh, Project Monarch program for the CIA. Just, it's kind of like uh, MKUltra. Okay, because a lot of these news reporters, they don't know what's going on. You know, on your average regular news, they're just reading the teleprompter, folks. They're not writing the news themselves. They get talking points. And if you still don't believe that, there's no way you can deny this, folks. No way. You'll never look at the news the same again. Now, folks, first of all, look at how many of them there are. I mean, you just just go through here. You'll you'll get it saying a bunch of times, folks. This is not a coincidence. These are from all over the country. These are your local news broadcasts. And you mean to tell me that out of what six, seven news stations? The government's not giving them talking points to tell you what they want you to hear. Take a look. You're traveling you sure are. This goes on for about ten minutes. I won't keep it on that long. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. In consumer news, economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors. It's real sad because the audience doesn't seem to get it. They seem to think it's a joke. They probably went home later that night and watched the news. It's a sad situation, folks. It's because of the damn fluoride they're putting in the water. 
Factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. I would be Economic highly pissed. May take I am highly spring pissed. out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors. Spring out of the step of the Easter Bunny. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The uh, final days of the uh, campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. Smoke camels than any other cigarette. Try camels yourself, the cigarette so many doctors enjoy. What do you smoke, doctor? Tens of thousands of doctors in all branches of medicine in all parts of the country were asked that question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was camel. Overload? Could this be the end of email overload? Could this be the end of email overload? Could this be the end of that email overload? Could this be the end of email overload? It goes on, Ice folks. Cream, you scream, you know the rest. Side scream, you scream, you know the rest. Ice cream, you scream, you know the rest. Well, ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, blue screen. Get ready, folks. Ain't got there yet. I can't do it all for you, folks. It's just too big. I mean, you gotta, you gotta follow the whole. You know, um, you click on the reports. You follow the reports. You follow the releases. They bring you. They'll bring you right down. Just follow the chain of command. Follow the chain of money. All right. This is Google here, the Western Home. That's all they'll call these. Our sites or information offices. That's actually Google. The other ones are um, the headquarters for the mainstream media. With most of which Ted Turner and high people in Hollywood own. Now, check this out. Here's the major clue here, folks. 9-11. The lady on BBC News says Building 7 has collapsed. About Jane Stanley. She what was the, BBC the fuck reporter is that? 26 minutes, 26 minutes before it fell. She was interviewed years later. She Hello? She said it's just very unfortunate that this whole conspiracy, this kind of ridiculous situation has grown out of what is a very small and honest mistake. What? A small and honest mistake? That's what I'm saying, Governor.